The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Ratu Wiliame Mavalili Katunavedere, President of the Republic of Fiji. I request protocol to escort His Excellency and invite him to address the assembly. President of the United Nations General Assembly, your Excellency Philemon Yang, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, my fellow leaders, I bring you greetings from the people of Fiji. I would also like to offer sincere congratulations to you, Mr. President, on your election to your high office, and we wish you well in the discharge of your important duties. As this is my first United Nations General Assembly, I begin by reiterating the words of the first Prime Minister of Fiji, the late Ratu Sir Kamise Semara, in his inaugural address to this assembly in 1970. And may I quote, we do not live by bread alone, and it is only from the firm base of sound moral and spiritual standards that we can go on to meaningful economic progress. Quality should not take second place to quantity, especially when we are estimating society, its life and accepted values. Quality is measured by standards, and these standards must be observed by larger nations as well as by smaller. But it is for the United Nations to set the standards and to disseminate them widely." Unquote. This statement was made when the United Nations was celebrating its 25th anniversary with the theme, Peace, Justice and Progress. In this assembly, 54 years later, the theme of the 79th session Unity in diversity for the advancement of peace, sustainable development, and human dignity for everyone and everywhere echoes similar sentiments. It resonates with us in its importance, its relevance from when Fiji joined, first joined the United Nations in its urgency in today's precarious global context. Climate change, sea level rise, pandemics, poverty, unsustainable development, conflicts, inequalities, injustice everywhere. The challenges are daunting. From Gaza to Sudan, Ukraine, Afghanistan, and beyond. Conflicts rage on as humanitarian needs escalate. These are the challenges we have been fighting since time immemorial. It is the background against which the United Nations was established in 1945. Today, the rapid evolution of technology has made us more connected than ever before in history. However, the more connected we are, the wider gaps between the rich and the poor, the developed and the developing world. Small island developed states who are on the forefront lines of climate change and sea level rise continue to grapple with the impacts of climate-induced disasters with devastating consequences for the ecosystem and vulnerable communities. Fellow leaders, this year, at least 72 countries whose population combined comprises almost half the world's total population have already or will soon select their own leaders at the polls. 
The world is in need of courageous leaders who are willing to garner the political will and mobilize the resources to bridge the divide and seek solutions that benefit humankind. We have two choices before us, to give up and go home, or to stay the course, renew, redouble our efforts, rethink, and reform together. The choice we make will be our legacy. We choose the latter, not for ourselves, but for those coming after us. Strong international cooperation, diplomacy, and a commitment to upholding the principles of the United Nations are not only important, but dispensable. It is time to go back to the basics, the foundation and purpose of the United Nations Charter. We must invest in the empowerment of humankind and the protection of human rights. Fellow leaders, next year, the United Nations turns 80. The United Nations is only as strong as its member states. For 79 years, the global community has placed in trust in multilateralism and in the United Nations to foster cooperation, uphold human rights, and promote stability. We now live in an age of distrust, fueled by the increasing disconnect between people's expectations and inadequate responses to the multilateral system. It is our collective responsibility to counter misinformation and disinformation. Trust is a prerequisite for effective multilateralism. The, confirmed, the continued success of multilateralism is critical. There is more to be done to ensure the voices of our countries are heard. An inclusive and responsive multilateral system must be able to respond and adapt to the challenges of today. The stakes are high for developing countries, including small island developing states and least developed countries that can continue to be left behind in the development race as we grapple with multiple crises. Despite our limited resources, the unfairness of the global governance system and obvious inequalities, small island developing states continue to forge ahead. We do not have the luxury of time, nor can we justify inaction. Building economic resilience is a requirement for sustainable development in small island developing states. Recovery from the frequency and magnitude of climate-related shocks, including disaster, are costly affair. Mobilizing the upfront funding needed for adaptation remains a challenge as resources are focused on recovery and reconstruction. The adoption of the multidimensional vulnerability index for small island states opens a new chapter in the ongoing effort to safeguard the future of vulnerable developing countries. Mainstreaming multidimensional vulnerability in index into existing practice with policies will help ease the economic burden for small island developing states when needed the most. Fellow leaders, cultivating a culture of peace is now more urgent than ever. The, Pacific, the Blue Pacific continent knows the value of peace. Having lived through its horrors of its absence, our oceans and its diverse and vibrant lands have been a theater of the two world wars and a testing ground for the most dangerous weapons, the impacts of which are still felt today. Yesterday, the 25th of September, there was an unlateral fight test firing of ballistic missile into the Pacific Ocean. We urge respect for our region and call for cessation of such action. And the principle four of the Ocean of Peace, as was endorsed by the Pacific leaders in Tonga last month, our statement reinforces the Pacific's peaceful example to uphold international law and urge others to refrain from actions that undermine peace and security in the Blue Pacific. Under Principle 12, the Oceans of Peace sets and champions the rules of responsible, peaceful and de-conflicting behavior. Fiji may be a small state, but through our leadership and stewardship roles in the region, we make a profound contribution to regionalism and multilateralism. Fiji's first ever foreign policy white paper 
builds on three interconnecting themes of Fiji's foreign policy, sovereignty, security, and prosperity. Fiji's National Development Plan for 2025 to 2029 envisions empowering the people of Fiji through unity, based on the pillars of economic resilience, people empowerment, and good governance. True to the spirit of multilateralism, our bilateral, regional, and multilateral development partners are key part of our efforts. We commit to the principles of the 2050 strategy for the Blue Pacific Continent and to the Pacific Leaders' vision of a prosperous Blue Pacific Continent. Fellow leaders, as a large ocean state, Fiji is a proud advocate for the United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea. Fiji has signed and will rectify the agreement on biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction in the lead up to the Third Nations Oceans Conference in France. Fiji has rectified the World Trade Organization Agreement on fishery subsidies, which aims to eliminate harmful subsidies that contribute to illegal, unregulated, and unreported fishing. We call for a concerted effort at the World Trade Organization to finalize part two of the fisheries subsidies agreement that addresses subsidies to overfishing and overcapacity. Fiji reiterates the importance of understanding the vast ocean space guided by science and data in order to undertake risk-informed decisions. As the global community prepares for the climate COP in Baku, Azerbaijan, we call on countries to work together with the United Nations to implement the outcomes of the global stock take undertaken in COP28. Deep, rapid, and sustained reductions in greenhouse gas emissions in line with the 1.5 degrees Celsius must be vigorously pursued and accelerated. The phase out of unweighted coal power transitioning away from fossil fuels in energy systems will contribute to the achievements of net zero targets by 2050. Both adaptation and mitigation finances require a substantial increase. We call on states to commit to finalizing the new collective quantified goal and address glaring gaps in climate finance. The momentum from COP27 and COP28 on the loss and damage fund and the Santiago network must be accelerated in order to protect vulnerable communities who stand to lose most from the climate crisis, particularly in small island developing states and least developing countries. By 2050, around 240 of our coastal communities will be displaced due to sea level rise. 42 communities are in urgent need of relocation. With limitation of the multilateral climate financing architecture, Fiji has established the world's first national relocation trust fund to support our relocation cost. We have issued domestic and international green and blue bonds, piloted low-cost parametric insurance products for rural communities and engage in the private sector in climate resilience building. We call on our development partners to support our efforts. Fellow leaders, the Pact of the Future, adopted at the Summit of the Future earlier this week, opens pathways to new possibilities. The world deserves a future of peace, dignity and prosperity. It's never too late. Mr. President, Excellencies, Fiji's commitment to multilateralism is unwavering. We will continue to work closely with the United Nations and all member states to advance efforts towards building a better, safer, and a fairer world for us all. Binagapakalebu, and I thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Fiji.